Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India When we are talking about mentoring in the organization, we need to recognize the criticality about the choice of the mentor. Mentoring is can be very fruitful if the choice of the mentor is appropriate. So, we need to be conscious and proactive about seeking mentorship and in that process, we should not be surprised if someone uh, does not uh, accept our request to be the mentor. We need to patient about it, because mentoring requires involvement and time commitment on the part of the mentor. Many time, they may not be in the position to offer that much time, attention, commitment and care. So, it is perfectly valid that some uh, seniors may not be able to accept the request of request of mentoring from their younger colleagues. So, we need to be sure that mentors understand what is your expectation in terms of time and advice. Mentoring is successful most when they, when it is backed by some agenda. If mentee knows what he or she is expecting to develop, uh, what is obstructing in the best of the performance in their job, what is expected from this employee to perform or to be like in the next promotion or in the another assignment. When employee have these kind of insights, mentoring works the best. We need to be judicious about mentor's time. If mentor is kind enough to give us time, still we need to be judicious, we need to be conscious of the value of his or her time and accordingly we need to engage with our mentors. We have looked at so many examples where we can, we saw that how different, em, different employers are promoting the career planning in a more proactive way in the organization. Along with those things, along with those examples, we can look at many, many other activities which have immense value in helping employee to plan their career. These uh, activities, many of these are already being discussed in this session like job posting, tuition reimbursement, performance appraisal for career planning, counseling by managers, uh, job rotation, counseling by HR, HR need to be available for the counseling if employee wishes so uh, about their career. Succession planning, succession planning we discussed briefly in the previous session, which is about maintaining or preparing people uh, to be more talented. Succession planning is already we have discussed in the last class, which is about preparing the talent pipeline, means the preparing the pool of the talent to take up the uh, uh, next level job. We need to have succession planning, if not possible for all the position, all the senior positions most for, for the critical positions, critical senior level positions, there has to be uh, pre, uh, there has to be proactive succession planning on part of HR. Uh, formal mentoring, lot of organizations have established certain procedures to identify the mentor and include mentoring as part of the uh, manager's KRA or key result areas. Uh, common career paths. Career paths have to be defined and can be defined by many organizations for the uh, employees in their organization. Dual uh, ladder career path, some talented people may be successful and, uh, and in the process they can also bring more value to the organization if they provided the opportunity for the dual career path. Career booklet or pamphlet if uh, uh, must be, uh, can be prepared. Uh, by the employers to make their employees more aware of the career possibilities, career options. Written and individual career plan should be part of the performance appraisal system, because performance appraisal without development plan is anyway incomplete. So, 
So, why not to make it more structured and make the career development plan as part of the performance management system. Career workshops, these are more structured uh, uh, engagement with uh, an interaction between employees and the expert to help them to identify their interest, values, aptitude, uh, job orientation, career anchor and help them to uh, pursue those interests and build their career and develop their career. Assessment center is a thorough process to look at different uh, competencies of the employees. We, we talked about the assessment center in the last session, wherein we discussed that assessment center, center are generally the combination of various exercises, virtual inbox, case analysis, simulation, teamwork and psychometric assessment, many, many exercises can be uh, incorporated in the assessment center, which gives the holistic picture about the competency of the employee. Training program for managers is also very important. Not all of us can be natural mentors, not all of us can be proactive in managing career of our employee. For that, we may require training and organizations can provide that training to the uh, to their managers. Orientation and induction program is one of the most critical opportunities for HR to communicate values of the organization, rules and regulation general expectation and also telling new recruits about the plausible career pathways available to them in this organization. This is the time when employees are generally most focused and uh, uh, have the highest, uh, most intense attention to whatever input they are given. So, induction program can be a useful platform. Uh, to tell people about their career plan and the possibilities of their of the career path they can have in this organization. Orientation program, generally we use this word of orientation program for the uh, 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 program or engagement for the senior employees. Senior employees also need to give orientation, they also need to be given input about change in the market, change in technology, change in regulation change in the psychographic profile of the, uh, of the, of the new recruits, uh, change in the business aspirations about the organization. All that requires structured, focused interview. That is the orientation program and orientation program can also be a good opportunity to tell people about their career pathways, career choices, because that can help them to look at the available career options in the changing environment. and in the changing demand of the organization from, from them. Special needs, high potential people need to uh, be given recognition and engaging them in the career plan, engaging them in the developmental interventions is one of the very useful way of uh, meeting the need, psychological need of the uh, high flyers. It also helps uh, not only psychological need, but also career need, but that is that can be a morale booster for the high, high, uh, high flyers. So, uh, uh, specific inputs can be uh, very relevant for the, uh, for the high potential people in the organization. If there are dual career, uh, career couples and that number is increasing more in the organization, organizations can provide some career options to the uh, spouse of the employee and that can not only make the life of the couple more, uh, uh, that will not only make the life of the couple easier, that can also be a good retention strategy for the organization. Diversity management, ensuring that people from different caste, creeds, traditions, sexual orientations, physical abilities are part of the workforce are part of the organizational manpower. That is becoming more and more important these days. Until organizations or employers become conscious of the nurturing diversity, until they make special effort to increase diversity in the 
within their department, within the organization, that diversity may cause rift and uh, acrimony in the society. So, uh, to make the harmonious society, we have to have organizations respecting diversity and proactively supporting and increasing diversity in the organization. Many a time people come from different cultures and they may not have natural, uh, natural appreciation for each other. Henry Trandis said that all of us are ethnocentric and focused on and consider our world view as the world view or as the most accurate representation of the world or accurate uh, world view. That is the biggest obstacle in diversity management. So, we need to recognize that we are ethnocentric, we may not be 100 percent correct about so many things, uh, our approach to life, our approach to work, our approach to uh, solving problem in certain way or there can always be multiple ways of doing things. And different people may tune to think differently about issues, problems, challenges of the society and of the organization. In this kind of environment, cross cultural training, diversity sensitivity training, general sensitivity training. Uh, uh, training about difficult conversations, appreciation for the multiple world views, these are some of the very useful inputs, not only for the diversity management, not only to build the harmony within the organization, that can also be a criteria or can become a competency for employees to be judged as the future leaders. Future leaders of the organization cannot be the people who do not respect or do not understand the diversity. Expatriation, uh, repatriation, people call being called from the foreign countries to take up the special roles or people being sent from the uh, uh, home country to the foreign countries to manage their uh, establishments are again the ways of managing career and uh, development practices. Many organizations have inculcated some very interesting initiatives for career development, like providing employee with the individual development budget, provide on site or online career centers, encouraging role reversal, uh, wherein supervisor and subordinates or uh, uh, different stakeholder take up each other's role for some stipulated period of time and that gives them the perspective about what is uh, how to look at things how, uh, from that perspective in the organization that makes them sensitive, they make also, they also makes them prepare to take up the higher responsibility. People who are at the higher management need to recognize the distinctiveness and the unique value being brought by different roles, different jobs in the organization. And uh, role reversal help them to appreciate the uh, contribution of different roles and different jobs in meeting organizational objectives. Corporate campuses are being established uh, by many corporates, by many organizations. They are uh, physical campuses as well like Infosys Leadership Institute is a very, very popular and amazing example of the corporate campus. They, uh, uh, the corporate campus can also be e-learning gallery uh, developed by one organization. Which, are, which is more virtual in nature. And with the after COVID-19 uh, pandemic, many organizations have recognized the value and the ease with which the corporate campus can be established or e-learning pro, uh, program can be established. Help organization to career success teams, that is a method of career development initiatives where number of people are engaged and the career management is done in the context of the team. Providing career coaches, providing career planning workshops, utilizing computerized on and offline career development program, these are some of the initiatives which, uh, may, which is being used by few corp, many corporates for the career development of their employees. Next thing comes uh, managing promotion and transfer. Promotion decision are crucial, these are not easy decisions. 
generally most of the time uh, promotion decisions require certain dilemma to be resolved and those dilemma those questions may be related to seniority whom to promote the people who are most senior or people uh, who are more competent answer is not obvious uh, how we should be how we should measure the competence there should there be more objective assessment should there be the reporting by the stakeholders should there be more subjective assessment can assessment be based more on behavior or more on performance and result these are the tricky questions we will be talking about the performance assessment part in the next session wherein we will discuss about the performance management system but we need to mention and we need to recognize at this stage that uh, uh, managing and measuring competency in the organization itself is a crucial question because many time we do not know whether subjective assessment will be better about a competency or objective assessment will be better about the competency whether assessing behavior is a better predictor of the job performance or assessing result is the better predictor of the job performance uh, pertaining to different jobs in the organization is the process formal or informal should decision be uh, uh, done more uh, in the formal way more structured way or it is more on the informal which takes care of the many stated and unstated factors like familiarity coming from certain region belonging to some caste uh, speaking a particular type of language coming from some special type of campuses these are the things which are being considered and many more in the informal decisions so can we made these elements more formal can we make these uh, elements clearly stated and can we make these things as the policy for the uh, promotion is a big question some of these can be made the policy but many of these uh, cannot be made uh, as a policy because that may generate some contradictions in the uh, preferences among the team members uh, among the uh, top team members uh, another uh, decision about uh, uh, promotion is related to the vertical or horizontal expansion of the organization should we give more responsibility or should we give different type of responsibility should we just increase the geography of the people and based on that promotion title can be decided or we need to have some qualitative change or qualitative difference in the nature of the job only then we will call it promotion or uh, uh, we can also call it just job enrichment uh, for the horizontal expansion of the job. So, these are the important questions which uh, have to be resolved and uh, important to decide the policy about management decisions uh, 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 these are important to decide uh, about the promotion decisions in organizations next thing is uh, handling transfer employees reason for desiring transfer and employers reason for transferring employees these are the two aspects of the transfer employers reason for transferring employees are to vacate a position where employee is no longer needed, uh, to fill the position where employee is needed, to find a better fit for employee within the firm, to boost the productivity by consolidating the positions. So, these are the reasons why employees are transferred. Employees proactively, many a time proactively also look for the transfer because it helps them in personal enrichment and growth. Because uh, they may get more interesting jobs or they may also resist the transfer because uh, employees can look for greater uh, transfer because when if, if it increasing greater convenience and advancement possibilities. So, employee transfer have to be taken care of from the employer as well as employees perspective. After transfer HR required to do something uh, before the actual retirement of the employee to make it successful and make it uh, 
helpful for the employee. So, employer need to do some pre, uh, pre retirement activities uh, that can be based on the counseling practices uh, like explanation of the social security benefits uh, available to the senior citizens, uh, how they can spend the leisure time and uh, they can be counseled about that. Retirees can also be given inputs and probably this is the most important thing financial and investment counseling, how to invest the money, how to manage their money which they are likely to get after retirement, health counseling, how to, how to take care of the health, how to manage themselves, how to manage their health and how to manage their health care. Many people probably most of us identify very closely with our job. And when retirement takes place, we not only lose job, but we also lose our identity. That can be psychologically traumatic experience for many of us. So, it is all the more important to prepare psychologically about the retirement. Uh, counseling for the second careers, there are many aspects, there are many jobs and uh, jobs like freelancers and also jobs of the full time workers which are available, which happen to be available to the retirees or the retired professionals. Those things must be shared by the uh, company. Of course, retiree also need to search about that, but in the pre retirement stage organizations are supposed to take. Uh, uh, HR function supposed to tell them about the uh, second career options and ways of pursuing those options. Sometime within organization itself, there is an opportunity for the second career. Those opportunities must be clearly elaborated, they must be uh, uh, properly communicated, should be communicated timely man in a timely manner, so that retirees or, uh, or the people who are nearing retirement can prepare themselves for those uh, second career options within the organization. There have to be certain things to be taken care of when you are hiring old employees or older employees or employees who are pursuing their second career. First is uh, there has to be a, a culture of respect and honoring experience. We looked at in the maintenance stage while describing the maintenance stage of the career. We also looked at the uh, decline uh, in the decline stage of career, what people expect in those stages are not more of the financial incentives, but more they look for is the recognition for their experience and competency and uh, their ability to influence or teach coach or mentor the younger employees. So, any culture which do not honor the experience should not indulge into hiring the uh, second career people or people after retirement. Uh, a important need for the people who are in the decline stage of career and to some extent maintenance stage of career and certainly the decline stage and certainly and more so uh, uh, amongst the people who are uh, who are pursuing their second career and that is flexibility. Flexibility in using their time, flexibility in working on different projects are very important to make the older workers successful in your organization. And something related to flexibility is opportunity and facility to continue with the part time engagement, because part time engagement gives them sufficient uh, margin to pursue their hobbies, pursue their social relationships in the organization in the particularly in India and that uh, the jobs which provide this opportunity are certainly found to be more interesting by the older workers. Now, we will discuss a very important aspect of job which is matter of concern for the managers, for employees as well as the HR department that is employee engagement. 
The term employee engagement suggests that it has emotional as well as cognitive element. What is emotional engagement? Emotional engagement means forming a connection with peers and co-workers, experiencing empathy and concern for others feeling. That is the emotional aspect of engagement. There is a cognitive aspect of engagement as well that refers to being aware and aligned with mission and the role of their work. So, employee engagement you must have heard about engagement surveys, uh, engagement methods, engagement techniques, these all are inspired, these are all based on the emotional as well as the cognitive element of engagement. Factors that affect engagement, employee engagement are uh, organization culture, recognition and growth opportunity, role clarity, infrastructure support, adequacy of training and development. Employee engagement is the result of the availability of hygiene factor as well as motivating factor. If only hygiene factors are there, engagement will not happen. If only motivating factor is there and hygiene factors are not there, then also in employee engagement will suffer. So, employee engagement is result of or it is affected by so many such factors which I have just mentioned. The important question is how we can enhance the employee engagement. The first aspect of employee engagement is that organization must communicate their strategy and direction clearly with care. Organizations need to inspire and motivate their employees with the help of data and insight. They need to establish stretch goals collaboratively and also they need to give opportunity for growth and developmental inputs along with the stretch goals. Leadership play a very important role in the employee engagement. Leader who has the high integrity and trust instill employee engagement to a significant extent. In fact, trustworthiness and fairness are the two perhaps the most important factors in making people engaged in a at a workplace. We must talk about the nurture and task leadership at this stage. You must have heard about many leadership theories and approaches like transformative leader, trait based theories of leadership, situational based theories of leadership, authentic leadership, spiritual leadership, so on and so forth. Research on nurture and task leadership was conducted by uh, Professor J. V. P. Sinha. He uh, found that Indian society has more dependence proneness and also has some collectivist relationship orientation uh, and that so those societal elements are reflected in the organizational context as well. So, what he found to be most effective leadership style in the organization are uh, is uh, nurture and task leadership. Actually, he found the style and then gave the name that in India and this study was conducted in the late 70s and by the time it, uh, uh, in the 80s this term was coined and uh, about a dozen studies were conducted to uh, examine and re-examine the uh, validity of uh, his hypothesis and it is more or less established that in India the nurture and task leadership is more effective, wherein it is uh, it, uh, in, in nutshell it means that not democratic leadership works best in India, at least in the uh, organizations or in the workplaces, nor simple task oriented leadership or task uh, orientation works in India. What is found to be most effective leadership is wherein leader remains task focused, but takes keen interest in the development 
and growth of his or her younger employees and uh, his or her team members. This is a result of two very important societal values, uh, which are most prominent in the relationships in the society in India. What are those values? These values are Sneha and Shraddha. What is expected from the people, from the seniors to provide Sneha, affection, a altruistic affection towards their team members and in return, team members supposed to have reverence, faith and trust in the, uh, in their uh, senior, in their leaders. So, nurturing task leadership is found to be very effective style of leadership in Indian context, even in current times. Though it was presented in 80s, but it is still found to be valid in many studies. Leaders also need to be coachable, because technology is changing, psychographic profile of the new entrants in the workforce is also changing, nature of economy is changing. As a result, the aspiration of the young employees is also changing. Because of so many factors, the personal theories about how to manage or how to lead may not be uh, very effective after a while. So, leaders need to be ready to embrace the new challenges, to embrace the changes in the environment and how to embrace that, how to make sense of the dif uh, difference in the, uh, in, in the environment, uh, they need to be open for the coaching. So, coachable leader are critical in uh, enhancing the engagement of the employees. Many organizations are trying many, many interesting things to enhance the employee engagement like FedEx holds a track record of success from delivery to customer service in till 70s. So, though we today talk about the analytics, FedEx kind of organization has not only collected data and they have tried to decipher the pattern from that data uh, and uh, unravel the uh, different aspects, which can be offered at work to make the employee more productive and more successful. And regular feedback is a method they have adopted. Uh, regular feedback is the lifeblood of the leadership development. It is also found to be very effective in enhancing employee engagement. Of course, feedback has to be given respectfully, must be conveyed with care. Uh, uh, a Mahindra IFS offer on the wellness program is again found to be very effective in enhancing the employee engagement, because that ensures the good health, wellness for employee in proactive manner. Uh, Adani group uh, offers yoga based interventions uh, in, uh, in its uh, multiple locations in many organizations. As a result of these wellness practices and the wellness interventions, employee uh, feel indebted to the organization, because they not only become more relaxed, they not only become healthier, their relationship also improves not only at workplace, but also many a time uh, in the in their family. So, as a result of that they see that intervention at job is also helping them to be uh, more effective, more pleasant in the personal life as well. And as a result, uh, they, they, they develop a sense of gratitude towards the organization. So, wellness uh, is a very good method to enhance employee engagement. L and D, uh, learning and development, for example, KPMG that offers customized and tailored uh, L and D programs. A Cisco employee can use my learning network to access a repository of the online courses, remote labs, simulations, games video on demand modules and many recordings of the event, these are all learning material and that helps professionals. We talked about the knowledge economy and professionals, those things are valued greatly by the people who are part of the knowledge economy and that in turn enhances the employee engagement. 
G follows an interesting practice called workout process. It is a HR practice innovated by G. It is focused on fast implementation of the measurable improvements with accountability, which is obtained by speed and simplicity. So, this is a this is based on a OD intervention, where people from the different departments come together, identify what are things to be done to enhance the, um, uh, enhance the performance of the organization and not only identification happens, then and there the meeting, then and there the teams are constituted, the measurement aspects are identified and then a follow up mechanism is set up. That makes people confident that this is one organization where their solutions, their suggestions will matter, where they can change the processes and systems, where they can contribute to improve the organizational effectiveness, they can contribute at their personal level to make the workplace a better place to a more productive place. So, when organizations look at these possibilities, any talented person, any talented employee feel more engaged uh, uh, with the organization. What can I do to be more engaged at work? It is not only the responsibility of the uh, HR managers or employers to enhance the engagement. We can also do something to be more engaged in the job. Uh, planning works. If we plan our work better, we become and we remain more engaged. Daily planning works, contingent planning also works. So, we need to plan for the unforeseen events as well. Uh, it has impact on both, it has impact, we are discussing in engagement. So, uh, this has come in the context of engagement, but it also increases productivity. Uh, daily contingent planning benefits even when we face the interruption during the day. We all know that none of us, most of us do not have the luxury of undistracted time, particularly in the era of WhatsApp, Facebook, LinkedIn, we cannot expect undistracted time. But when we our planning, when we also have a contingent, uh, contingency planning uh, in our general planning uh, calendar, we can bear with these interruptions. So, towards the end, we will have a quick recap of what we discussed in this session. Uh, uh, career can be managed, I think that is a most important message. Career can be consciously managed, employee, employer and HR function all have some important roles, uh, important contributions to make to manage the career. Employee engagement means engaging heart and mind both. Organization culture, recognition and growth opportunity, role clarity, in infrastructure support, adequacy of training and development, they all contribute to employee engagement. And at personal level, daily planning and contingent planning works to enhance not only engagement, but productivity. Thank you very much. Namaste.